stop using WordPress. Now, let me get into this. So for majority of people, WordPress is really not the most comfortable and user-friendly platform out there for beginners and people who've never built a website before. And this is coming from someone like me who's built many, 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 many websites. And I started on WordPress where I got my lingo for it. And then I started developing my way from WordPress to Wix to Shopify and now on Webflow and Figma. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to building websites and I'm always expanding my reach about my knowledge base and skills on which platforms I use to build websites. So in this video, I basically want to touch on the reasons why WordPress is really not the most beginner friendly or the best website platform for people to go to just because everyone else is using it and majority of people seem to be using it still for some reason, maybe because it's cheap and they just want to get a website out there. But then when they get open with this WordPress dashboard, they are bombarded with a bunch of things and they don't know where to start. I completely get you. And in this video, we're going to talk about all this stuff around it. I'm going to share the pros and cons a bit on each platform. And then we're going to just discuss the alternatives and which ones I would prefer, obviously dependent on the niche. And obviously that is a very good point around which website platform you use as to develop your business's website is very dependent on your business's industry and niche. All right, so let's start off with the hiccups that I've seen and experienced when using WordPress to develop websites for myself, my businesses and clients' businesses. Firstly, the C panels. Once you've decided who you're going to host with and you register there and you've paid, you're going to open up a C panel and that C panel can sometimes just be horrendously disgusting looking and confusing. So that was my main point. It actually will cause a ton of confusion the moment you land there if you have no experience in building websites. Unfortunately, it is that way. Once you've done that, you've got to install WordPress on the website's hosting platform and then you can get going, I guess. And that leads me to my second point right now with pickups of WordPress is that it has an insane, insane learning curve. If you are not a website builder or you've just decided to build your very first website, I would not go with WordPress because you're going to sit hours and hours and hours trying to figure out how to use it before you even get started. Point number three, let's not just talk about the amount of plugins that you can get for WordPress. It is absolutely insane. There are thousands upon tens of thousands of plugins that you can get for WordPress and they all serve a purpose. So don't get me wrong. They are really good ones out there. But if you don't know which ones to use, we come back to the very second point of learning curve. You're going to be sitting there for hours trying to figure out which ones are the best, researching, researching all over Google and YouTube and going crazy, hoping you're going to find the best one for you, only to find out maybe it's got a pricing plan or it's not the right one for you. And that leads me to number four right now. Okay, so four is it needs constant and never ending maintenance. It's not like when you go and order uh, or get a package on Shopify, there is just one quick update and it's a click of a button and it just goes right through and there you've got your update. When you do it with WordPress, WordPress has got an insane uh, maintenance side of it that if you just simply update a theme, it kind of leaves you with a whole bunch of other things that need update as well. So um, it's, it's something that people who have websites on WordPress uh, when they log in and they get that little thing on the top that says new updates available, they all start to st get stressed and start sweating because they don't know what they're going to have to update now. And number five, we're going to talk about security. WordPress, on the other hand, hasn't got the greatest security. And let me tell you why. Because if you go to any website and you just view the source and you can see it's built on WordPress, right? If you just go to the back of the URL at the top and you type in there forward slash WP dash admin, you'll end up on the website's home landing page for its login. Now, that's not very good security because all you need right now is the username and a password. And these days we've noticed it's not that hard to either lose your password or username or give it away without even knowing. So it's really uh, not the greatest when it comes to having a security field for your website in the back end where there are probably plugins and stuff that person can get to obviously up your security level and enable two-factor authentication, etc. But I mean, also now we go back to point two where we've got this massive learning curve and do you know which ones to choose and which ones will work for your purpose? That's the problem. Point number six that we're going to go into right now is speed. WordPress on the other hand has great themes that you can choose from. Some that are good, some that aren't great. And there are developers who've worked behind these themes to make them what they are. So there are developers who develop them for speed and there's some that develop for 
uh, most functionality around design and then that affects speed. Now, if you don't know how to optimize your website for speed, because I'm pretty sure majority of people who've decided to go with WordPress are not the most skilled, I guess, in building websites. So if they tend to go with WordPress, they won't know how to up the speed of their website, which ends in shitty load times and Google hating your site and maybe even crashing it. You never know because you're installing and uninstalling all of these plugins that you find on WordPress's marketplace. So without all making your day doom and gloom right now about choosing a website and you've probably gone with WordPress already or whatever the case might be, let's just discuss quickly some WordPress alternatives that you might want to look at, which might help you in the long run. These that we're going to get into have really, really improved over the last few years. Like I cannot explain because I've seen it from a few years ago when I started, you know, how they've developed over the years. It's been drastic, like extremely, extremely drastic. I mean, some of them are now using an integrated AI that is helping you develop copy for the websites. They can even help you build a damn website for that matter. There are tools to do that. Uh, not in this video, but I can obviously make a video about that, which will actually show you some of these that you can find. But they've, they've integrated AI, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to, ve to develop copy, maybe some images, etc. And those places have got developers developing website themes just to help their platforms perform better. It's absolutely amazing what they've developed over these last few years for people to use, and it develops flippin' amazing websites. So I guess for most of you who are watching this video right now, you probably aren't as skilled in building websites as maybe me or someone else. It doesn't matter. If that is you and you're watching this video, you're just probably looking for a damn good looking website. You want it to be easy and functional and probably price is another factor that you're looking at. Well, I've got some alternatives for you that I'm gonna share with you right now. Let's get into them. Number one on my list, okay? Definitely gonna be Wix.com. Why have I got Wix on the top of my list? Because Wix has got insane packages that you can buy. You know, the pricing plans that I'm talking about right now. It starts as low as like $4 something as of the time of making this video, if you wanna just have a simple website. I mean, that'll be great for people who just wanna have a portfolio or a simple landing page or something like that. Brilliant for that type of stuff. The customizability is like insane. You can customize it like however you feel like and there's no code included. So it's just a drag and drop functionality. So for most people, like I just said, you're probably gonna enjoy that a hell of a lot more. Well, without getting into further information about Wix, you can obviously check out their pricing on their website, but they have from beginner platforms or packages all the way to enterprise packages and e-commerce and business packages. So you can pick whichever is suitable to your business and your needs and just go crazy and customize the hell out of it. I'm gonna share the second one with you right now is Shopify. Shopify is a great website, especially if your business is aimed towards more an e-commerce route where you're selling physical products, etc. And you just want to have a website where people can just buy because Shopify is an extremely dedicated e-commerce platform. So if you have an e-commerce store or turning your physical store into an e-commerce shop online, this is going to be your one for you. It really is good. They're on a the bit of a pricier or mid-tier range uh, when it comes to cost, but I think at the moment they are about 25 or 29 dollars a month but if you want to sign up with my link below you'll probably get a deal with them today i think it is now currently one month free with one dollar per month or something like that uh don't quote me on that but you know they change the offers every now and then it's okay uh, we'll, we'll just stick with it just click the link below if you want to go through that otherwise just go shopify.com and then you can check it out yourself but as i said shopify.com is really the best website for your business if you're going e-commerce selling products online and this is just one of the best that you can find option number three now this one is a really intricate and really insanely beautiful builder but if you don't have time to sit and develop you don't have time to look for animations or build these little intricacies. Ain't nobody got time for that. Webflow is the third option I'm talking about here today. It is really not then the one that you should be considering for your business's website or your personal website if you're not into that stuff. I personally have been diving heavily into Webflow at this moment. The connection between Figma and Webflow and how they work and all that stuff, it's just, it's amazing to me. And I'm always trying to upskill myself in this. So if this is something for you, go and check that stuff out. It is really, really amazing how you can integrate that, integrate those two with each other and uh, just develop insanely beautiful websites. I mean, if you just look at some of the examples you can find online, 
that's what you can build with Webflow. Like, it's just insane. So yes, there's my whole video for you about all things website and which one you should choose above WordPress or the alternatives to WordPress, if you will, because at the end of the day, remember, if you're going to just start your own website, you do not have to go with something like WordPress. It is not a must. That it is just one of the alternatives that you can use. And some of the ones that I've mentioned in this video are obviously going to be more suited towards and very dependent on what you want to use it for. WordPress, though, is a, an amazing platform. I still use it today. I'm not going to lie. I do use it today for some of my projects, personal projects, client projects, depending on what's going on. But I am leaning more towards the other ones as we go along with the more technology growth, etc. Um, because they are just a lot easier. And if you own an agency, you obviously you know want to pump out more websites than you know harboring on a lot longer projects, if that makes sense, because of the profit input and output, whatever. You know what I mean. Nevertheless, out of all the website platforms that I've just mentioned inside this video, I can highly recommend all of them. Depending on your business and stuff like that, you know, I highly recommend all of them. And they can help you develop whatever's in your mind and put it on a website. It's really, really great, especially with how they're advancing, like I just mentioned. Like I said, if you want to get started today, I have special links down below for you. I've organized these things with these different platforms that I can actually share this stuff with you. And then they got some, like some specials, I guess, for you guys, if you want to use those links down below, make sure to check them out if you'd like. And if you guys haven't started your website yet, I just want to tell you to get started because website building is a serious skill and almost every business owner needs it right now. It is becoming more and more prevalent in this digital age. You just need to start. So yes, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. And if you like this type of videos, it's going to come out a lot more because this is the type of content I make. I talk a lot about entrepreneurship, personal finance, investing, business, marketing as a whole, you know, from all my experiences in the past and what I'm currently learning. So I hope to share that with you and that you'll become a subscriber. And then until the next video, I'll see you soon. Cheers.